Kansas City Massacre We are prone to forget that in the 1930s and 1940s we were living in the Great Gang Age, that bloody era when organized gangsterism threatened to tilt the balance between crime and law. It was the age when FBI agents were not authorized to carry guns, when prison breaks were commonplace, when corrupt bosses kept the heat off vicious killers and provided them with cooling-off spots. It was the age when machine guns were sold for hard cash and no questions asked, when the airplane, automobile, and telephone allowed the members of an invisible empire to laugh at the law. This was the setting for a crime that shocked the nation, the Kansas City Massacre. When the heat was on, the rat-eyed small shots might scuttle to their holes and lie in fear and hiding. Not so the big-time boy. He knew where to go. No skulking for him. Luxury, safety, a chief of detectives who not only shut his eyes to others' failings, but who indulged in a few little rackets of his own, like selling diamonds to inhabitants of disorderly houses. And to top that, there was a political machine providing protection and grinding out gangland favors with a swish of greased palms and the oily grace of a squat little boss. Such was Hot Springs, Arkansas. Frank Nash, murderer, train robber, graduate of McAllister Penitentiary, fled out of the rear door of Leavenworth Warden's home into freedom. He had served six years of a 25-year term when he made his break from the federal prison on October 19, 1930. Nash scuttled back to the desolate Cookson Hills in Oklahoma to establish old connections. There he waited for the heat to die down and then, armed with letters of introduction, trekked up to St. Paul, Minnesota. This outpost of the underworld empire was ruled by Ma Barker, her son Fred and Vern Miller, a willow-spined character who had learned the intricacies of machine gunning in France and now enjoyed cuddling a chattering gun to further his career in crime. Nash was highly welcome in Minnesota. He told the St. Paul gang lords about the safety of his Oklahoma badlands. Soon he had opened the old-time outlaw-infested Cookson's to a streamlined variety of bandit. There, he said, was the ideal cooling-off spot, the hoodlum's haven. They were inaccessible and safe, and just across the way was paradise. Hot Springs, Arkansas. But there was a fly in the ointment. Too many bosom pals were absent, detained by John Law. It was a situation the Empire knew how to remedy. On the morning of December 11, 1931, seven prisoners broke out of Leavenworth Penitentiary. They kidnapped and wounded the warden. In the background hovered the balding, hook-nosed Nash furnishing firearms, welcoming them to the Cookson's. More were coming. On Memorial Day, May 30, 1933, six convicts disrupted a baseball game in the yard of the Kansas State Penitentiary, kidnapped the warden, and escaped. They were a deadly gang. Wilbur Underhill, Harvey Bailey, Robert Brady, Ed Davis, Jim Clark, and Fred Purell. It was like old home week in Oklahoma Hills. Frank Nash welcomed his empire friends. Of course, Nash had changed. Now he wore a smart new toupee on his shiny pate. He had grown a mustache. He hurried about the Cookson's, settling his guests, making them comfortable in their crude quarters. They might in time get bored, but across the line and inland such a little way was Gangland's utopia. He went there often. There was the white front pool hall under the partial proprietorship of good friend Galatus, solid citizen Galatus, Galatus of the gang whose hand rested on the web that sent warning messages to the Empire. Peace and quiet and safety at the white front. Apprehending a Dangerous Fugitive It was June 16, 1933, when this pool room sanctuary suddenly felt the presence of men who lacked the swaggering gait of gangster gunmen. Frank Nash felt his arms clamped tightly at his sides. He heard low, authoritative voices, Agents of the FBI, Authority of the Attorney General, Leavenworth. The safety of the White Front was no more. Almost instantly, he was in a speeding car. He was leaving freedom, safety, and hot springs. 